My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. There was a script called The Experiment with the thought of a film for Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Ivan was convinced that he only had one shot at these guys and that the script, although he liked the premise, he thought it wasn't well enough executed and certainly not tailored enough in order to get Schwarzenegger and DeVito at that time in their careers, which was a big deal. So he approached, you know, Tim and I and said, read this and tell me what you think and do you have any ideas? And we read it and said, yeah, we, we, we have a lot of ideas. See, Vincent, you're the missing part of my life and, and I'm the missing part of your life. And when we find Mama, we can feel the missing part of hers. The big thing that's missing is the spine of the story. What's going to really drive the narrative both emotionally and narratively? What's going to keep the audience going through the story? But what's the spine, the moral core of what's going on here? And it's missing because in that script that he had, they're not looking for their mother. Once we go through all the machinations of, of them bonding as crazy and funny and goofy as it is, they have to have a goal. They have to go on a journey. And that journey has to do with discovering their roots, where they came from. What's this experiment? And where's mama? And is, and is mama still alive? This letter was written 30 years ago. We were five years old. Our mother didn't die when we were born. And you knew all this time where she was. I did a little research on, on twins who'd been separated at birth, and then they meet years later. And remarkably enough, a lot of them, they married women with the same names. They named their dog the same. Uh, they used the same toothpaste. They used the same soap and deodorant. They had that, they shared little ticks. So I tried to incorporate all that funny stuff in there to at least convince DeVito that this lug could possibly be his twin brother. <laughs> oh, God, we both flushed at the same time. Before we did it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and so you have you have comedy and you have this journey with some danger and suspense and ultimately you have heart because they find their mother. That's that's the key of the whole thing. And I even said, that's a good idea. <laughs> so we went and wrote him. And he got him. Excuse me? I'm Oh my God, I don't even know which one is which. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I watched a lot of Arnold and Arnold's films, and I wanted to I wanted to listen to his voice because look, he's being asked to do a comedy and basically not for the most part deliver what's been expected of him, right? So I'm trying to get us a sense of the sound of his voice, right? You know, I'm so excited. Now we can go to museums together, talk philosophy together, read books together. Because there are certain words that he mangles in English that are funny. California. <laughs> or even in okay. Kindergarten Cup, it's not a tumor. <laughs> or in Twins on the Plane. Yakety yak, don't talk back. If you don't scrap that kitchen floor, you ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yakety yak. Don't talk back. Da -da -da -da. And he's, he was perfectly happy with making fun of his Austrian accent. 
he was happy making fun of his muscles and being a goofball, which was incredibly generous of him as an actor and as a, as a major, major movie star to kind of subject himself to that, even though he winds up being a hero. Yeah, he does a little muscle, tough guy stuff, but for the most part, he's just playing a, a wide-eyed, goofy character who has no idea this world he's in is just blowing his mind. Would you drive this car back from the airport for me? Oh, would love to. Yeah, good, good. That would really be a big help. Do you have a manual, please? Danny, to his credit, he said, "Ah, this is this is just Louis from Taxi. I don't, you know, you're asking me to repeat myself over and over again." <laughs> but, so we, you know, we tried to do, and we gave him a girlfriend, and we gave him this and that, and tried to do that and make him happy. Linda, you, oh, you look gorgeous in this light. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Mm. 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 Hi. Our relationship with Ivan was such, Ivan wasn't intimidated by having us around. And if we, if we had a disagreement, you could actually sit down with Ivan and try to make a case for what you thought worked and what, and, and what, you know, didn't. He'd have some kind of suggestion and you could actually convince him. You negotiate first and you attack last. Well, you negotiate first and then you attack. You never negotiated. <laughs> nah. I read that uh, that um, they hired a writing team to write the sequel of Twins called Triplets. And they were hoping to get Eddie Murphy to play the third twin who shows up from out of the blue and the three of them go off on some other adventure. And uh, uh, nobody asked me. Or, or Tim, I was a bit disappointed that I wasn't, that we weren't given at least the shot at um, coming up with it because as soon as I heard that premise, I had some really good ideas, but I wasn't gonna give them away. <laughs> I just can't get over how alike they are. Oh, yes, it's Relationships, the memories of that are very precious. I'm, I'm certainly proud of the film. Over the years, I've run into Danny DeVito just, you know, occasionally, casually, locally. The guy runs up and gives me a big hug. He recognizes me and I recognize him. And we ask about each other. And th I mean, that's very unmovie star-like. Things like, you know, little things like that are really great. We are twins. We are basically the same. <sighs> Julius, I know this is a very touchy subject for you, but we don't look the same. We don't act the same. We don't talk the same. We don't dress the same. I know. So if we're so much the same, how come we're so goddamn different? Well, I, first, I just wanted to congratulate you on yet another movie that's managed to stand the test of time. Thank you. Uh, the movie's f absolutely fantastic. I'm wondering how you became involved with Twins and what you brought to the table once you were attached. I thought of the idea, finally. I mean, I knew both Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. I sort of had run into them around 1985 or 86, and I started talking about making a movie with them. I got a bunch of writers uh, together. They talked about a brother's movie, and then I actually thought of making the brothers twins, and I suggested that to the writers, and then we started working on the script. What was it that you had seen in Arnold in particular that made you know that he would be ripe for comedy? Well, he is, you know, really funny. I mean, I knew him on a sort of social basis. I think I saw him 
in Snowmass, the ski area. He said, you're, the, you're that Ghostbusters guy, right? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he said, you know, I could be a Ghostbuster. I, I remember that line. And I looked at him. I went to dinner with him. And he was just very charming and funny. And uh, I thought, I mean, he was one of the biggest stars in the world at that time. And he had never done a comedy. And I thought, well, uh, we should try that and see how it works. Great seeing you. Catch you later. <laughs> I've only been driving an hour. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your directing style, particularly on Twins. How do you work with folks both in front of and behind the camera? You know, I believe in a good script and getting them to act very naturally. I really think about the intention of the scene and the energy. I'm also loose because uh, I worked with Bill Murray in his first movie and my first movie, uh, Meatballs, and I realized if I'm going to survive, I'm going to have to be nimble. I'm going to have to move really quick because uh, he's brilliant and he, had, he does these uh, kind of lines that are actually better than the script. So I started developing that technique. And by the time I got to Twins, I did a kind of combination of improvisation where I get the actors to sort of play the situation as written with most of the lines as written, but as if everything was happening in a new way. And I would allow for improvisation. It's not so much about doing comedy lines. It's about what would you do if you were really in that situation and, and you were feeling the things that you had to feel in that scene. And it sort of developed as a, uh, as a technique. Arnold, Arnold didn't have much experience in that sort of thing. Danny has, Danny DeVito had a lot of experience and he was very helpful in terms of getting Arnold to, to go that way as well. I love it when you hit people, George. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> That's great. Actually, I hate violence. But you're so good at it. Schwarzenegger was used to being in those action movies where, you know, the syntax was not his syntax. And the comedy came from him sort of saying those things improperly. I didn't want to do that. I wanted him to play legitimately uh, as a character in the in the film and the first thing i would do is look at his face and you know he he used his eyes and his eyebrows a lot and as a way of sort of hitting the comedy lines because that's what you do in an action in an action film you sort of come forward and and try to lay something out and i said no just say the line as if you're talking to me as we're having a conversation and that was sort of the beginning of the process then i did these scenes with danny along with him and and i said just the way you, you and I would talk, just talk to Danny this way, as if, but in the scene and in the situation. And it worked. It worked beautifully. Uh, and, and clearly you enjoyed working with them both because you made another couple of movies with Arnold afterward. You made another with Danny. I, I imagine that the working relationship was, was pretty fantastic during Twins. It was wonderful. I think this was the first movie I made after Ghostbusters. And so the... The expectations were very high, but it was just a lot of fun. I think they enjoyed being there. Where we were in, on locations, and uh, it was a bit of a road trip when we were doing it. And it was they were very, very professional, and and you know they made me feel very comfortable. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Let's rock and roll. It's his first T-shirt. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up uh, the fantastic <clears throat> Kelly Preston. Uh, she just passed a couple of days ago. Uh, describe, I'm so sad to hear that. I, I'm uh, devastated. So describe working with Kelly on this on this film. They were both Kelly Press and Chloe Webb, you know, who played the, the two sisters who go with our guys, turned out to be very important. And I mean, Kelly is just one of those lovely people who likes to be on the set, is not afraid. She just has this great sense of humor and... It showed in all the scenes and I believed as unlike as Chloe Webb and Kelly were as sisters as as our heroes were and I think it's sort of helped contribute to make the movie work. This is Linda. Hi. Hello. And her charming sister Marnie. Sisters? Twins. And then you have a fantastic villain in Marshall Bell. Describe 
what Marshall brought to this project? I love Marshall's voice. He's an all American guy. Uh, he's sort of very, he sounds like a very practical, intelligent person. And, and you sort of tend to believe him and you have a real sense of his villainy. Now, let me see. I'm supposed to be giving you one of these. There you go. Sorry, it's my first day on the job. Have a nice day. Now, where do I find this very special person, Mr. Vince Benedict? It's hard to talk about movies about um, 30 years after they're released, and you're not used to the rhythms of that story. I watched it last night just to, just to remind myself of the movie. I hadn't seen it really since its release almost. And how do you feel about it uh, now having seen it after so long? It hit me in a very emotional way. I, I love the two guys and what their relationship. I love the relationship with their actual mother. We are looking for Miss Marion Benedict, please. Yeah. Is she here? Yeah, she's here. She's here. You know, sneaking in like that, I should call the police. Ah, uh, no, no, no. No, you don't want to do anything like that. She's our mother is the thing. We are her sons. Twin sons. That scene with them is so sweet too, the, when she's playing the gardener and, you know, doesn't believe them. It's, it's just a very sweet scene watching, especially the aftermath of that scene, just watching the two brothers react. Yeah, I think uh, it's heartbreaking when they're asked to leave the compound uh, in Santa Fe. And um, I had forgotten about it uh, when I watched it last night. I said, oh, that's good. <laughs> I thought that was a good story point, And um, I believed it. She passed away some time ago. She passed away. You just, you just said she was here. I meant her spirit. Her spirit is always here. Come on. It's hard to draw a line from comedy and action comedy. This is an action comedy. I was surprised at how much action there was in the movie. Uh, because you tend to re, uh, you know, remember the the relationship scenes, and what makes the movie work are the relationship between the brothers, between the two sisters, between all of them together, and most of all between their mother and and the two of them. You found each other. Now you found me. At what point during the making of the film did you realize that you were going to have a good product? The first scene I shot was the jailhouse scene where, where Julius goes to get his brother the first time he's ever seen him. And um, it just seemed to have a, a rhythm to it. And it had a, I believed it, it was funny, it wasn't dumb. And I believed each of the characters. I, uh, I loved Arnold's earnestness in that scene. Vincent. Dearest Vincent, I know you don't know who I am, but believe me, I came halfway whoa, across the whoa, world. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got another six hours to pay the money back. And tell the claim brothers that harassing a man who's already in the slammer is beneath even them, all right? I don't know any claim brothers. I'm no. your brother, Julius. I was proud of it. I, when I watched it last night, I started laughing. I laughed quite regularly through the whole process. I think I knew that first day that we had something special. Okay, right. I pay right now. You pay now. Okay, Vince. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> go pay. Good. All right, pay him. What is this, candid camera? And uh, I read that at one point during the editing process, you guys really knew you'd tapped into something because every take was different and yet everyone was laughing. In the shooting, we had that as well. And then of course, when you look back at it in the editing room, we had no problems in putting it together. We did a little bit of additional shooting. Uh, when I, I like to test films. Uh, I think it's useful in comedies just, just to, to make sure you haven't forgotten something or to make sure that, you know, it's playing in a realistic way. Do you, and are you uh, there for the testing? Oh yeah. That's the whole point. And the audience loved it. And, but and what I learned is, there was three or four times where we could magnify the laugh by just doing 
a small thing. But the one thing I remember reshooting, the chains bonk him on the head. And there was just a few chains and there was, you could see him and everything. And I thought, you know, we should do this again and we should just never end the chain and just build up a huge pile and just make the actor disappear underneath it. It's extraordinary how, what a couple of miles of chain did to, to make that scene work. Yo, holy schmoly. If someone comes up to you and says twins, what is that first memory that instantly jumps to the front of your head? It was going to Santa Fe and um, I think we celebrated Thanksgiving there and we had a party for the cast and crew. And it was such a lovely party and my family was there with me and Arnold's family and Danny's family. And it was a really familial event. And it wasn't shooting, it was around the shooting, but it sort of reminded me of how joyful making movies can be. And uh, I looked at my son who was I think 12 or 11 when he plays that scene with the basketball with, uh, with one of the fathers and my daughter's in that scene. And I think she's only about eight. And uh, it was just great to see all of them. That looks just like you, Grandpa. Honey, why don't you go inside and help Grandma with lunch, OK? Go on. You mentioned earlier the fact that it was a bit of a road picture. You went to Santa Fe. Describe that for you. Is, is making a road picture harder than making a studio picture? Yes, it is harder, and but it's more fun. I mean, it's harder because you don't have the creature comforts that at least used to come with a big studio movie where you were in a stage and you had your offices and you had assistants and everything was sort of organized. Getting on the road is tough uh, because you're in a new place every day. You don't know what the weather's going to be like. You don't know what your extras are going to be like. And there's a lot of unknowns. But I don't know, I just find that my adrenaline, you know, gets heightened in that process and more good things come from it. All I wanted was make us into a family. Family, my butt. There's no family here. There's nothing here except me and three losers. And of course, uh, over the years, the legacy of the film has simply grown. The fans have certainly been vocal about their love of twins. And there's even been talk of a sequel on and off. Uh, I'm not looking for a scoop or anything, but now after having seen the movie last night, is that a film that you would still like to see a, a, an additional chapter made? Um, along with Ghostbusters, I think uh, Twins is, is the film in, that I've made in, uh, historically that the mo most people ask about getting a sequel. And, uh, and I think the concept of triplets, which is what we were playing with, seems possible. And I, I know I, as well as millions of others, would love to see it. Looking back at Twins now after all this time, what does the film mean to you? Well, it's what I was sort of alluding to before is the sense of family. You need your partners and a family to sort of fill in the gaps that you have um, in your life and in your personality. And it's the thing that sort of gives me the greatest strength and the greatest joy. And it doesn't matter how different we actually are, but if we can find a way to sort of find commonality, I think these are good themes and the good human themes uh, for oneself. Mr. Ryman, this was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for talking with me. Thank you.